we use the word ratios? Ratios, in other words, that everything, uh, that, <coughs> that the truth is that, that every question holds the ratio of its own resolution. In other words, that you can't know the answer to a question. You can only plant the seed and follow the ratio. In other words, follow the course of its natural unfoldment. And this is why the golden section, the golden mean, have been so important uh, to mystery tradition and then in terms of esoteric tradition because it's saying that whatever you begin with will grow in terms of ratio, in terms of a growing uh, set of implications. And we can think of this really as a spiral that begins to unfold, that, that the, the, the medium is the mentor, meaning that, that truly as we uh, inquire into something, as we plant the seed of the idea that for good or ill, and this is where, this is the magical quality of consciousness, People think that the seeds they hold of hatred and contempt and righteous justification for smallness, all these things, are real and true. They're not. They're seeds. And they will follow a ratio of that energy. So whether a person feels they're just, oh, well, that's not me, if they're holding those seeds, they will invariably open. And this is why a lot of the questions about the evolving of consciousness have to do with getting at the deep unconscious and motivations that seem to come up because those will hold seeds that the conscious mind will try not to uh, take credit for or be concerned about and yet it will still grow into the life and that's why a lot of this is about the conscious cultivation of planting of seeds and that as a matter of fact what we'll find in the world this world and the problems in it cannot be changed in one iota by reacting to it the only thing that can change this world is by planting seeds of creative and imaginative potentiality, wherein those ratios become, begin to become the informing energy that begin to unfold, that we only grow consciousness. We do not ever create consciousness. We do not uh, solve anything. War will change nothing. Ideas change everything. And the human condition has been to labor under a sense of God is elsewhere, one is sinful, incomplete, a monkey. One is, uh, one is constantly being told that you are not that. And this says, no, no, no. Each human being, step into the blossom. Realize your unique geometries, your unique story, your unique face is like one of the actors showing up on stage. You're needed. Your story, your interaction, even if it's not perceived as such, even not felt as such. It's like a performance where you're just not that into it. But you still need it, because the other actors need you. And that's really where we're starting to understand these questions about the purpose of consciousness is to blossom. And in the garden of blossoming consciousness, it is not to judge one another on the unique character of each, but to say, ah, I see in you an artistry, an artistry, something that is making you truly express things in a way that couldn't be known in any other way. This is why in my library studio I have art books. And because the artists always tell me, it says, look, I'm bringing forth the universe. And Van Gogh says, is mine wrong and Michelangelo's right? Or is mine simply a way of seeing and opening universes based upon my creative engagement and Michelangelo's another? And when we say yes to that, then we become more and more comfortable with this notion and possibility of scintillating implication rather than fixed meaning scintillating implication. And that's when we have a love affair rather than uh, an office relationship with a boss telling us where we have to be, what we have to do, where we have to go, and when it has to be done. And we can make these analogies in all different places from, from uh, you know, religion to, to uh, the way we go about our lives. And that's why the, the journey now from, as I say, from the, the magus and high priestess, we really have the, the, the two qualities of oneness behind the outer uh, face and door into multiplicity and birth or, or the qualities that we think of as cosmos. And that will be the empress and the emperor. And there are three three couples in the tarot. There's the Magus and the High Priestess, the Emperor and the Empress, the Sun and the Moon. And so if we look at, again, like trees, every relationship begins with, this is its deep root, but what we will do is that we will see that, that we're starting with essentially mythic, abstract, unmanifested qualities of consciousness when we're looking at the High, Priest, the high Priestess and the Magus. 
when we look at the emperor and empress, we're beginning to look at the manifestation of the primordial parents, really Adam and Eve, the first, uh, whether the human version of the first parents, the primordial parents, of truly the emperor and the empress, meaning yin and yang, coming together. And that's why when we move now toward the moon and the sun, we start to understand that in the tarot, that once we, we uh, see it as stations or, 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 or periods of evolution, really like from the ages of one to seven, as children, we go through a great deal of change. And yet, from the ages of one to seven, we're not holding mature relationship. We're still taking in the world. We're still simply absorbing. We're learning its rules and its policy. And that's the same thing with all development of consciousness and any uh, ancient esoteric uh, mystery tradition was to say, look, you're starting out as a child. So you're going to go through these conditions and as you do, you will encounter these different experiences, these different years of your life, and you will go through something called puberty, which will completely transform you, come out of nowhere, you won't know what it is, but when you get on the other side of that gate, you will be a different being. Well, we go through puberty and esoteric development as well. In other words, we put into the crucible of ourselves all of the conditions and qualities, and then we start to go through struggling with our own unique subjectivity. And this is where when we move into the death, uh, temperance, the devil and the tower, those four archetypes which precede then the star which will lead to the moon and the sun, is that those four are very strong and difficult paths of initiation. They shake the psyche, the, the primacy of the inner self down to its very energetic basis. And they ask questions about what is it that I believe? Where am I involved in my own self undoing? And then finally, through these dark journeys, through these difficult journeys, these, and I do liken it a bit to teenage years, you know, where you're really forced into the world is not what I thought it would be. Who am I? What's my purpose? Everyone around me is crazy. Am I the only sane one? Or is everyone around me sane and I'm the only crazy one? You know those questions. And that's why, in looking at the tarot as a wheel, why I'm doing the preamble is that this really leads into uh, the star after the journey of the tower. And the star really has to do with aspiration. So when we move from aspiration of the star into what we're going to move into with the moon, we start to realize that in aspiring, in moving toward, there is always the realization that we will deal now with those qualities of consciousness that until, really like a tree or a plant going through a different growth process. You know, once you break the surface, once the leaves begin to unfold, once the stalk begins to, to emerge, once the bud begins to emerge, you realize that, that actually what you're dealing with is an organism of consciousness that is going through growth stages. And what I discovered in my work is that, that we do the same thing with the plant of our consciousness, that we go through stages, and that as we do, each of those stages contain or hold the knowledge and experience of the preceding stage, a bit like rings in a tree. You know, it's not, because we, again, and, and this is the problem, we have a horizontal notion of consciousness. Oh, I was a child, and I don't do that anymore. And we don't, and you, you have to turn in this, it says, no, everything is vertical. You're a tree. You actually don't leave anything behind. You are continually creating greater and greater capacity to hold your own fullness, your own implication. And this is why much of the journey of life is about creating an effective crucible, an effective chalice. And this is why in St. Paul, where he says, the body is the temple of the soul. And he says, you'd say, well, what does that mean? And what that means is that what you are is that which contains the wholeness of your being, the holiness of your being. And thus, what you are here to do is not to associate one particular age or one particular time of ease as though that's spiritual and who and what you are, but truly that you are a great tree with very deep roots, and therefore you must be true to the roots of your being, even if you can't see them. You